Hello and welcome to a new continuation of a series that I was doing on the Ultima um, higher performance or whatever tile painting, graphics painting or graphics drawing routines. Uh, this is for a tile editor, which I was kind of, wasn't really planning to do, but I, you know, like these things happen, you, you go to bed one night and you go, well, if I do this and this and this. You start thinking you get a couple steps done, and then you start going, okay, well, I guess I can do this. So I went ahead and <clears throat> threw this together. And this is preliminary. Um, this is functional in a very, very basic way. It does not have all the features I want to implement and doesn't do certain things right now. But I want to at least show and uh, what it is doing here, uh, what we got, and what it, what it'll look like, kind of how it'll work. Um, go over uh, some of the setup stuff. So this is a little bit of an introductory. We'll get into the coding, but not a whole lot. Um, I don't think, or not not deep dive. And most of the coding is really just fairly straightforward stuff anyway that you would do for any kind of editor, like moving the cursor around the screen and that kind of stuff, because it doesn't. That stuff doesn't really change. There's one or two considerations here because of how the, these tiles are laid out, and we'll talk about that. But Otherwise, it's fairly straightforward, except for flipping, because of how the Apple works with the graphics, and flipping the actual single bit, <clears throat> which I do in a very basic kind of way, because each bit is a pixel on the screen, and then it's just however they're kind of done in 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 a you know consecutive fashion, gives you color or white or whatever. But before we get going on that, I want to put a couple things up front in the video, so there it's early in the video here. One is um, just to uh, reiterate. A little bit. I am using uh, Woodson Eclipse platform. I'm not really sure how all this puts together. I followed followed a guide a couple of years ago on this, so I'm really not sure what I'm talking about here. But it's called Woodson, and it uses the Eclipse platform. I guess this is the IDE, and Woodson is an Atari um, specific editor using something called the Mads um, Mads Assembler, M-A-D-S Assembler. This is just what I'd been using for um, Atari programming because it had certain features built in for that, which we don't need here, obviously, and we can kind of get around some of that. Um, <clears throat> but I just want to show how this how this is set up as a kind of a, so it's early in this video, so if anybody wants to mess around with this and they want to set theirs up, this use the same thing and just directly pull in the files, uh, you can be kind of up and running right away, as long as you've got this set up in um, in the, the Eclipse, form, Eclipse platform with Woodson and the, the whole uh, Mads Assembler thing. Um, this, because it is an Atari-based thing, it does normally put a header in that is for binary files for the Atari. You can change, you do a, a H minus here, which means no header, so it goes as a raw file. But because it's an Apple file and it's an Apple binary file, there's a couple things you got to do to make this work. It took me a while to figure this out because there's really no information of trying to do this this way, and I had to kind of experiment a bit. So the first thing you're going to do is wherever your origin is, which in my case is 6,000, so that puts us uh, 8 kilobytes past the second high-res screen. So the, the way this is all laid out is the first high-res screen is at 2,000 hex, which is the normal thing, and then at 4,000 hex is your 256 tile, 8 kilobyte tile data. So that's, that resides in page 2, <clears throat> high-res page 2. And then after that, in a hex 6000 is where this code starts. This puts it all the way above your basic program because we're going to use basic for some of this, at least a little bit. Um, although you have to one, worry if you get too long about running into uh, the top of memory because at the top of memory you have DOS loaded in and right below DOS is where AppleSoft will put its string variables. So depending on how much programming you were to do in this fashion, you got to be careful about what you do because uh, the Apple isn't really laid out in a way that makes it easy for that. Otherwise, you have about 5K um, of code below the te the high res, the first high res screen that you can use. There's a block of memory there, and AppleSoft, as I mentioned before, does not skip around the screens. So, if you were to write an AppleSoft program long enough, it would go right on through graphics memory, and then if you were to then run something and write graphics memory, you will destroy your program. So keep those kind of considerations in mind when you're working this way, <clears throat> because we are doing you know that basic and then loading in uh, machine language program. But so what we do is we back it off four bytes, our origin, and we put four header bytes in. Now these are functional. This one's not really needed um, because it. Uh, uh, well, okay, I use apple cider, not apple cider, um, <laughs> apple cider. Listen to me, um, cider press. Sorry. <clears throat> to manipulate and load the uh, files. 
and Cider Press will put this information in. Theoretically, there's a switch that I, I think maybe you could put in the link. I don't really know. I can't find any information on that. But I found, as I mentioned before, one forum that shows if you put in, when, you, when we compile this, you see tile edit ASM and those tile edit ASM dot ASM. If you add 06, number 06, the 06 tells it binary file, tells Cider Press the binary, it's a binary file, or this number 6, I should say, and then 6000 tells it the address. There may be another switch, I think I mentioned this in the other video, that for the link, but I haven't found it, if so. But what you can do is you can then just basically, every time you compile, you can just copy, you can just copy that, delete the fo this file in your thing, and then just rename the one it just made to this. <clears throat> and you can switch back and forth very easily that way. But this, these two bytes are used because Cider Press only changes the first two bytes, the address, at least with that switch. If there's another switch to add the length, well, if we can find that later on, we'll put that in. But for now, you have to kind of manage this. So you'll have to get an idea of how long your, your program is at the first couple times you compile it and make sure this length is long enough to handle that. Um, so, you know, low high byte. So we've got about 5K. Now this is not really needing to be 5K, but I'll tell you why in a second. Because this is a copy of my tile paint, which I left some code in here for. I took some stuff out, but I left some other stuff in. But anyway, um, so you'll have to manage this. But if you do this, you can then directly load it. In. You can directly rename the file, <clears throat> load it directly into your, your disk image from Cider Press. And then when you run it, when it does, um, when it loads the, uh, right here, tile edit.asm into 6000, and you call, this is this decimal version of 6000 hex, and you call that, it's all ready to go. It hits its entry point right in the right at the beginning here, and off you go. So, like I said, just as a kind of a um, this is a this is just a copy of this pro of my, of my tile paint program, and with some stuff cut cut back and other things added that I might try. Um, I left a couple things in, and I modified the tile print routine because the tile routine to paint the tile on the screen was dedicated to making an 11 by 11 in a specific spot on the screen, and this one I need a little bit more flexibility. So I modified that. Um, but I also left in some code here for possibly pulling in uh, the, the, some of the DOS stuff to be able to load sectors and maybe be able to move around the map um, with the intention. I think I'll, I might take it out of this because it doesn't really apply. I was originally going to make this maybe kind of a program that did everything for editing tiles, but I think this is just going to be to edit the individual tiles, not the maps. I think I'm going to do a different one that way. So anyway, we'll probably cut that stuff out and this will be a much shorter program. Um, so let's take a look at what this does. So we're right now we've just got a basic, you know, this just sets it up to, to work. Uh, the, U, the Ultima 4 switch isn't really implemented right now, but eventually I have it so you can go between actually Ultima 3, 4, or 5 um, tile sets since they all load into the same place in 4000 here. We'll just change that around. And then there'll be some code in here where you're going to have it where it will, it will f you can go back and forth when you basically exit out of the machine language program, you'll get back into basic, you'll get a menu at the bottom, it uses the four lines at the bottom, and you will be able to um, do certain things like loading and saving the tile sets or changing a tile set. A couple of things that, that basic just handles a lot easier. I really don't even know how to do, how to load or be, do a B load of a file or a save of a file in machine language directly. Um, it's, I, could, I might figure it out later, we'll see. Um, and there may be a couple of other things to do, but for the most part, you know, that, that kind of switching around is probably going to be well do that way, at least, at least to get it to working. Again, you get this stuff working, and then you say, okay, maybe I can modify it later. So what this looks like is, <clears throat> for now, very basic. I don't have all the menu stuff down at the bottom like I want. But what we've got is um, an edit editor window here. It is 14 dots, pixels across by 16 high. Remember that... Each 8-bit byte only holds 7 bits, 7 pixels of data. The high bit is the palette, which you see down here with the P switch. So if I were to go, let's go here, and hit P, you'll see it changes the palette for that byte, which is 7 pixels across on that row. And so we can flip palettes back and forth manually if we want to change the palette for that one byte. Interestingly, if you do it here, you kind of get something that looks like a tree. Maybe, because I could have, I mean, you could do the Christmas tree thing, you know, the actual pyramid with a little dot at the bottom, but having a little orange, orange can, in this particular 
world and, and tile set, orange could really double as wood. You know, you could do doors, you could do bridges, you could do decking on a ship, you could do, you know, all sorts of stuff, uh, as well as fire. Because or- the orange is kind of reddish and yet brownish, so it's kind of in between. Um, and, you know, again, this whole thing's based on imagination anyway. You kind of got to imagine what some of this stuff is a little bit. Because you're not going to get, you're not getting realistic examples here, to be sure. Anyway, um, there's nothing implemented here like shifting all the entire tile around or anything like that, like moving it up or down, left, right. I will put that in later, I think. So you could take this entire tile and shift it up, up or down one, left to right, one pixel and all that stuff. Hopefully some of that, maybe. Um, what we got over here, then, is we've got the tile laid out across the screen with at least two rows at the top and two rows at the bottom so you can see how everything stacks. And then we've got um, a series of starting at zero, the other tiles to see how the this tile fits looks next to these other tiles. And you can actually, I believe it's yeah, you can actually change this. This just right now this just cycles, so it just jumps the next fifteen tiles, and you can basically see what all these tiles look like in context. I th- thought that was kind of important to have. And you can basically just cycle around. And curiously, it's it's. There's 15 tiles here, so you you end up being one tile short, or maybe one tile long, at the end. So you can see when it wraps around, this is tile 255, and that's back to tile zero. But it serves its purpose. Um, the other thing you can do, at least at the moment, and I'll have a more direct way of, of, of picking tiles, is you can... Make sure I got this right. Yeah. You can hit the plus and minus keys, and quickly edit the next tile in the in the set or the previous tile. I do have to have set that up. Right now it is shift plus. I'll have to kind of change that. Make that a little easier to use on a, on a modern keyboard. Uh, if you're using this on an actual, actual Apple II, it would be plus and minus. In this one, it's minus and plus, but plus is a shifted key, so i got to figure that one out. Uh, trying to get something a little easier to use in an emulated format. But this would let you basically um, flip through, change, in sequential fashion. Uh, the tile you want to edit. So again, very basic functionality is here. Um, I don't know if I have... Let me check to see if I've got a uh, tile that might represent... Uh, he used the blue and green sets a lot. There should be a purple one in here somewhere. Or, I mean, a, a red one here somewhere. Let's see where we go here. I'm not even sure if that would... Uh... Oh, hang on. Yeah. Yeah, so this one has uh, blue and the blue and red palette, whereas, and this one has the green and purple pa- palette. So that's where you can see the fringing. So as you move around, the basic gist of this is that there's a there's a dividing line here between bit the first seven and the second seven. This mimics the tile, so this is you know byte zero of the tile, byte one of the tile, byte two, byte three, byte four, byte five, and they're in pairs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way down. And you move, as you move, it, it checks to see if you've crossed this boundary so that you can change the appropriate byte. Because since we're only changing one pixel within a byte, we got to have be on the right byte. Um, it's very, very basic. There's no, um, this cursor is literally just drawing between two different colors rapidly, regardless of what's underneath. I don't really preserve anything underneath there necessarily. Um, I just draw the tie, draw the uh, the flip there, and then but then it does restore. So when you move like from here up, it recalculates this byte, repaints this byte on on screen to basically erase over the cursor, and then puts the cursor here, and it just does that as you move around. I had that originally set up wrong, and I had um, an index, the index, the index in the table with Y, and I invertedly uh, inadvertently put it in. A or something or put the wrong one and so it totally <laughs> totally didn't work and I was like racking my head why why oh no I put a put a zero because I was gonna store I, I loaded Y with zero for the indexing because because we pre-calculate we actually wherever this byte is we actually calculate the address directly I mean the actual spot on address we still have to put that in zero page so we can index to it to get to it. Um, I suppose I could hard code it. I might try that, but it didn't seem worth the effort. So I just put it in zero page and use comma y and just put y to zero because we already have the address. We don't really need an offset. Uh, and I loaded y with zero, and then I had meant to put y into a variable, and I put a in 
into the variable and it messed everything up. <laughs> so once I corrected that, um, then it worked. Uh, then it displayed properly because it was you were moving around here and it was just leaving trails of cursor behind and all sorts of stuff. Anyway, a little aside. Um, <clears throat> and then we're gonna we're gonna do something like uh, over here. It says tile edit. This is gonna be uh, like what mode you're in. So when you flip back to basic, it'll say something else. Um, you know, um, loading loading saving whatever or something. But this is this indicates what mode you're in. I'll put some more stuff in here for the key. You know, you move around with the arrow keys, for instance, and like I said, the palette flip and the palette flip is P. Cycling the, the tiles in the middle is C. Uh, plus and minus is to change the tile to edit and stuff like that. So we'll we'll get to um, some of that, <clears throat> putting that in down here to pretty that up. And uh, basically, that's all it does right now. Um, nothing terribly fancy. Like I said, I just wanted to get it functional before I kind of put a video out about it. And we'll go in later with, uh, uh, and there won't be too many videos on this, probably just maybe one more, um, or one or two maybe, um, because there's not, this is not as complicated a programming job as the other, and you'll see in the code, this is, some of this stuff is just, it's ugly code, but we don't have space issues with this, and we don't have performance issues, because we're only ever changing one byte, so we really don't need to, you know, and maybe painting the screen, but that goes fast enough, oops, if you look here, um, if we, um, change our tile for instance it paints pretty much fast enough I mean it's, it's, it's you know it's not instantaneous instantaneous but I don't know about doing animations uh, that was the other thing I was thinking maybe animations but I don't think I really need that it's nice but you don't absolutely have to have that but so it paints everything fast enough that you know and this is running at you know one one oh this is if you were running on a real machine so you know obviously in emulators you can jack jack that up if it's if you need it faster so, but I'm always, I'm always trying to design, if I'm designing for performance, I'm always trying to design at stock. And when I did the stuff in Atari, same way, I was always trying to, what, the whole point of this was to say, I mean, I could design, you know, you just jack the emulator up and you get plenty, you get 40 frames a second. But that's not the point. The point is, what could we do? The question that you kind of ask is, and the whole point of making the whole tile display thing to begin with was, what can we do, on, a, on a, what could have been done, on a stock machine in you know the 80s in terms of performance like how fast could this have been done and how how much performance could you get out of it um and so that was kind of my impetus and so i always try to design for that level and you know sometimes people would want to take if i'm putting this stuff out people might want to take it and try it on a real machine and use it that way so you want to have it perform be performant uh but this is not nothing in here is that involved that painting the painting the, the 30 tiles on the screen or whatever that is is about the most performant thing that it does. Everything else is just flipping around with bits and stuff, and um, and drawing a you know a few things. So we just basically keep track of things. We got a we got a cursor. Um, when we go to the draw routine, we've got a pixel. That doesn't matter actually. Um, when we when we do the um, where is it? Oops. Here we go. No. Yeah, here we go. So what we do for the cursor is we just give it a color draw that on the screen change the color in this case it's uh, basically going to end up being um, red or blue flipped with white now I tried zero I tried white and black to flip back and forth but it was actually so fast even at 1.0 megahertz speed or at least within the emulator it didn't flicker it just was a solid block in which case you couldn't tell it from the background or the other the other pixels because it looked exactly the same as this it just it didn't flicker so I was like okay so I got to flip between colors then to see a difference because it was going so fast the persistence of vision was just keeping it on screen as a solid piece so anyway that's why that's that's why that's an odd color but if you notice when you go back and forth between the columns because of again how the how the apple interprets color you'll see it goes from red to blue so I'm not sure why it's doing red when the palette is green green and purple but um, well, it's because the high bit is set, uh, <clears throat> you know, because we are, we don't forget in this case, we, th we think of this as a pixel, but these are not actual bits. These are whole bytes. It's just, your brain has, your brain starts getting messed up here when you flip in, when you're dealing with things that are <laughs> yeah, a bit, one bit, one pixel versus a whole byte. This rep, this representation is, these are whole bytes. It's eight bytes tall eight, and one byte wide. So that's, so that whole byte, as you can see, it's greater than 128. Therefore the high bit is on, therefore it's the other color palette regardless of what the color palette is for the underlying pixel that's on the screen. Anyway, um, so yeah, so there's there's not a whole lot here. Key presses, we check our key presses, we route, route accordingly. 
Um, you know, we go up and down, we just check our ranges. The trick is when you go um, left and right, we do have to check, we do wrap around. So up, down, left, right, we do wrap around. Uh, so it goes back. We always, I got a routine here that basically says, okay, what bite, as I described earlier, what bite are we in? What bite are we on, depending on if we're on the left half of the screen or the left half of the pair or the right half, and which pair, you know, which which bite it is, as well as up and down. So it calculates that, and then it paints a bite, or it paints your, uh, it repaints the bite. Now, when it when it repaints the bite, it gets to get rid of the cursor when you move. So if we move up, what this has done is it now has recalculated this bite position, the address of this bite in the tile set. And then it is repainted on the screen the entire seven pixels. And then it moves the cursor, and then it goes back and animates. That's the basic gist of it. It's quick and dirty. It doesn't, it's not fancy, and it doesn't have to be because, you know, as long as we keep track. The biggest thing was keeping track of separate. Make sure you have a cursor variable. Make sure you have a, we'll see in a minute, a, an actual pixel value uh, when you're painting the pixels. Um, the changing tiles, just to flip in the tile around. The hardest bit to get going was the actual flipping of the bit. So when you actually change one of these, let me do one that's not the same color so it stands out. There we go. So we've got purple here, for instance. If we change the wrong, you know, the other column or whatever. Um, getting that to flip, it's not hard. It's just tedious to track and do everything with. So we did it, again, in the most basic way, a very, very basic way. Instead of trying to figure out anding, oaring, or any of that kind of stuff, I just basically said, okay, we're going to um, use, uh, we're going to use, we load Y with zero. That's going to be our, uh, uh, I'm not sure what Y was for. Oh, that's our index. That's our non-index index into the, the tile byte. We calculate the tile byte, the actual byte we're on. We uh, stick the 0 in temp 8, which will be our result after we change the bit we want to change. We get that, we get the value of the byte from the table of the, of the tile, and then we stick that into here, which is going to be the source byte. That's where we start. And basically all we do from there, once we check to see which half of the screen we're on, we use our cursor position if we're at 0 through 7, well, 0 through 6, which is 1 through 7. Again, you got to remember this too. It's 14 pixels, but they're numbered 0 through 13. So 0 through 6 is your left-hand column. So 0 through 6 is the left-hand side, and 7 through 13 is the right-hand side. So we check that, and if we're on the right-hand side, we subtract 7 so that we can normalize the bit position. Because even though we're the byte we're in is over here, it goes within the byte, it goes, you know, bit... 0 through 6 and bit 0 through 6. They are, you know, it just you're repeating. So we have to start over or we have to adjust to make sure we've got the right bit offset. So if we're 2 over the if we're if our position see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7, so that's byte 1. Now we're on byte 2. That's position 0 1, right? That's 1. So if we're on position 1, we're not on position 8 if we counted from the left-hand side. So we got to uh, subtract to get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of this byte over here. Again, keeping track of that stuff is a little... It's, it's obvious when you know about it, think about it, but then you got to sit there and think about it for a minute and figure out how I'm going to do it. But, but the way I'm doing it here, that's why I did it that way. So I could normalize that so that we always have a number below 7. And then, so we're always, within, we're always on the right bit. Then we get a loop counter going. And now we compare our loop counter, which starts at 0, so 0 bit, essentially, bit 0, I should say. We compare that with uh, the position we've calculated up here or figured out based on the pixel position, the cursor position. Sorry, not pixel, cursor position. So if we're at 2, we loop around till this hits 2. Because Oh, well, actually, I should say this first. So we loop around. If it's not 2, let's just pick 2 as our example. Let's say we're on bit 2 um, position-wise that we want to change. We check that. If it's not, then we don't have to do anything with that. We just come down here, and we basically shift uh, the source byte to the right one, which rolls the bit, the low bit, 
the lowest bit, or bit zero, it rolls that into the carry. So if it's zero or one, it goes into the carry, right? And then we roll eight, which is cleared out to zero originally, and we roll that carry into, we roll it also, and it rolls the carry, because if the, whatever is in the carry goes into bit seven. Okay, high bit. So we keep doing that until we hit the one we want. So when we go zero, one, two, now it falls through, and we still have to shift the source bit, because we got to get that into the carry, because the carry is what we're going to use to compare with where we are. So if the carry is, or well, if it needs to be flipped, let's say, not where we are, if it needs to be flipped. So when we wrote, so now that we know we've got the right bit, we rotate it and it sets, puts whatever's in there in the carry. If the carry is set, we want to clear it. So we jump to the clear routine. If not, we fall through and we set the carry instead of clearing it. And this is all kind of just, you know, branch here, jump there. It's just very straightforward. Uh, we skip around this because we don't need to rotate 7 again because we've already done it up here. And it, and it falls through to the, to the check, which rotates the bit into 8, the changed bit into 8. And then we loop around till we're done. Then, and this is very important, I almost forgot this. I, I did manage to remember this before I actually ran it. <laughs> Something else didn't work, but this, this part did. Uh, then we have to do one more rotation of the source into the destination bit by, because... Don't forget, we're only putting seven bits on screen, and it's it's low order. So the way that um, the Apple displays this stuff, as if I didn't mention before, is that these seven bits that it displays start at zero, not at the high bit. So it's reversed. It's reversed in the normal way you look at a byte. So this is actually byte bit zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and the high bit out here is is skipped, and then it just prints the next, you know, starts at zero on the next byte. So we have to rotate that all to get the high byte, high bit, sorry, to get the high bit and preserve that because that could be set. It, it'll pick it'll pick the palette. That that switches your palette. And I almost forgot to do that, in which case it would have rotated, but it would have been the palettes would have been wrong. Um, and then we basically Y has uh, Y holds still it was still zero, but it holds our uh, index into the uh, we store it back, and then we redraw the tile block. And that's basically the most complicated part of this whole um, thing really. Um, flipping the palette bit uh, in general, we basically do the same thing. We just load the byte in, flip, check it, flip it. In this case, we could do the, this case, because we know we're doing the high bit, we can just compare it to 128 and then add 128 um, or subtract 128 to flip it because we already know it's the high bit and 128 is, the value of 128 is the high bit. And then we basically change the palette on screen that's the uh, that shows down here and this this is I originally was gonna do this somehow a little differently but this became the simplest way because uh, because of the way this all works you can't get both of these or it's hard to get both of these to show as the same width unless you have more than one in a row you can do individual bit pixels but getting two or three in a row in one byte is it doesn't work for some parts of it so something you can, that's why you can see this blue see how this is wide here i'm sorry see how this is wide here and this is skinny maybe i maybe i haven't been able to figure it out but i i ha, if i put a couple of other if i tried to follow the pattern i ran out of bits you know I, their bits were there but it wouldn't display right it was a different color it would be shifted to red or something um because a seven you know remember three and a half pixels per byte so within a byte you really have to work from the left hand side you can't work it's hard to skip, you know, the first bit and get anything usable or like, you know, for spacing like this because this entire screen is oriented toward drawing left to right consecutively bit by bit by bit, skipping the high bit as you go. Uh, so in order to get these to come out to look good, because without being one being thicker than the other, I just made them this size and uh, so we could, so that they're consistent, right? Anyway. Just a little side. <clears throat> um, that's what this is. Show palette colors, which just basically throws them up on the screen. And again, there's multiple ways to do that. Uh, we got to uh, put a bunch of variables down here. Um, I'm not really using this palette flag. Spelled wrong anyway. Pixel colors used when we want to draw a pixel. Cursor, cursor. My temp variables. Flip bit position I don't think I'm using. Uh, anyway, so there's stuff like that. And let's go up here. Clear text. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, we draw the border. Oh, yeah, I guess we do have a thing. So I just set up a quick thing to clear the text window at the bottom of the screen, which is a pain because apparently, and I thought, 
the text and low res screens would be contiguous memory, but they're not. They're also a skip memory like the high res screens. Wonderful. So every row starts on a different position. It goes 40 bytes and then there's some, a few bytes off the end that are not used and then it skips down, you know, whatever an amount it is. So I had to kind of program this in a certain way. I thought I tried doing the entire block, you know, 240 bytes, four line or 160 bytes, and it didn't work. And it's like, oh, it turns out that that actually also skips around between rows. So this is just a clear routine to clear, uh, generic clear, which is pretty good actually, pretty, pretty simple. Uh, to clear it to spaces so that I can put menus and I got menus here. Now the menus I did just stupidly. Again, this is one of those just get it working. You know, don't try to be fancy because you really would do something like you'd spell out the word palette and then you'd make this one with a high bit and you'd check the high bit and you'd do all this other stuff and you'd genericize this into a XY location on the screen and you'd, you'd go through one byte at a time, move it to the screen. By the time I write all that code, I can just hard code, <laughs> you know, um, if I was doing something more generic that had a lot more text, you know, like a game, probably you would do it that way or whatever. But for this, it's like, you know what, it's just going to be easier just to, and with all the row things, you know, I had to fi figure out what, where things go and which row. This, in this case, it's on the first row, uh, which is also why <laughs> everything's on, the text so far is just here and not on separate rows. But anyway, so I just did it that way for simplicity just because I wanted to see the text on the screen and I didn't want to mess around with sitting there and figuring out, you know, indexing and co uh, looping codes and high bits and checks and all that stuff because by the time you add in comparisons and branches and checking high bits and uh, you know and looping structures and all and all that stuff um, for the little bit of text that's going to be on the screen you can just throw it up here um, and then we got the border which does similarly it just basically you know you loop to draw the top border you loop to draw and I did leave uh, the, the thing about the borders though if you notice I did leave I did put a gap in that's why this one's so narrow there was no real way I guess I could have done the blue but then it would have blended when you move the cursor here, this would have been white anyway. This almost this entire pixel would have been white because it would have, or if there was a pixel here, if there was a pixel here, it would have been white across, not across, but in between this gap, and it looks kind of funky. So I was like, okay, so I just narrowed it to make a gap. But I wanted to have this gap around for that reason because if you run them together, you you get white in a place you don't want white. Like if you did over here, this gap would be white as well. So now you'd have an entire line of white that's thicker than the actual pixel and it just looks odd so I ran you know seven lines instead of eight at the top and the bottom and I left a thing off at the end there and left thing off the end there to create a border a, a little bit of a gap in between that's just an aesthetic thing but it looks a little bit better and it doesn't mess with your head quite as much when you're moving around uh, but anyway that's what all this does this basically just creates the top the border and the middle border and the bottom border pretty straightforward stuff there that doesn't really matter I think that's about it that's this there's not much code here really right now um it was mostly just getting the codes for like you know all the character keys and routing them and, and uh, setting up tile cursor byte yeah paint tile pixel byte um, I think I covered that well I didn't maybe I didn't cover that did I cover this not really so basically to, to paint the pixel, to paint the, uh, not the pixel, to paint the byte, any one of these bytes, any seven pixels in any of these areas. Um, again, straightforward. Take the X pixel, get your byte. Store that. That's your data. That's, that's the byte you want to go through. Take the X cursor, cursor, uh, see where we are. Left or right, you know, uh, byte. Greater than seven, we're on the right hand side. Less than seven, we're not. So we do... Less than seven, we don't change anything. Right hand side, we adjust. Take the Y cursor <clears throat> um, and store that at our Y position. The pixel values are where we um, draw on the screen. So Y cursor, that's our row, and that's obvious. You just use that. So we just put our Y pixel since it's going to draw that entire row. Well, that one half of the row. X again gets us offset to where we want to start off X and then we just uh, we assume a zero color now when we're putting these bit bits up we're reading the bit patterns we're obviously only dealing here with all 255 color for the the pixel the that we draw here or nothing so we just assume that it's zero because I suppose you could do it the other way around but yeah that was assume zero 
So we, that way we can leave it zero if it uh, unless we find out it's not. So now what we do is we right shift and check same thing like we did with changing the bit, um, except we can do uh, a left shift. And then, because we are going backwards in this case, we're starting at um, position seven or position thirteen, I believe. Where's my thirteen? Reset if it's X and half top. Maybe not. Hang on a second. Well, it works either way, but I forget how I did that. But anyway, we basically use the the, uh, the carry when we rotate the bit out to tell us if that bit is set. And if it is, uh, if it's not, we already set the color to zero, so we just skip down to putting it on the screen. Otherwise, we reset the color to 255, Put that in the pixel color, and then drop through, and you know, and then you do your normal looping, whatnot, blah blah blah. So we're looping from seven to zero, six to zero, I should say, six to six to past zero. So when it drops past decrement, when it drops past zero, and it, again, these, I suppose you could do them more elegantly. I didn't care, so that's why I've got like a decrement, load it, compare it, and I, you know, again, get it working. It, we're not in under any kind of performance or or space and memory constraints here. Um, this is probably something I wasn't going to use or didn't end up using. Set or clear screen pixel, and that's about it. Uh, draw, and then draw the tiles. Yeah, you know, draw the, the draw tiles are just fill the entire screen, and then just again, in the most straightforward way possible, we just replicate blah 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 each row. So, to make the uh, that's to make these these ones in between. Again, you could do this more elegantly, but I wanted to just cut and paste and get it working. You could you could systematize this more and put loops and stuff in, but it was just easier just to hard code it. Uh, the tile block draws the whole block, and I think and then that's that's this is from the previous. That's from the previous. And that's about it. Uh, that's all the code. There's not really all that much. Uh, like I said, it's just it's just all the you know fiddling, so to speak. So that's what I got so far, and that's that's what we're gonna work on. Um, so I'll have at least a basic, but this would at least give anyone. I mean, it doesn't have to be even be for Ultima or for a role playing game. At the very least, you, you have a starting point for creating a tile editor <coughs> uh, and a tile engine for that matter, and you could modify it out however you want. You know, it is it, it does seem to be within the Apple system and, and a lot of other systems to be two bytes wide, sixteen bytes tall, gives you a relatively square square. You know, relatively square tile, so that gives you kind of a starting point for any number of things you want to do. So this is at a basic level very usable for many things that you might want to do graphics-wise, um, because it's already kind of got the right shape and it's got the all the stuffs in there to make it work. And you've got 256 tiles to deal with, which is exactly you know it works really good that way and takes up a block of memory, blah blah blah. So anyway, so but this is a good this would be a good starting point if people want to. Would want to do anything like this uh, and again on the apple II, i maybe there's some other stuff out there like this that someone's made i couldn't find it um and uh maybe it'll be of use to people and you know but we'll do a little bit more um showing more probably won't get into the code too much after this we'll just show features as i get them done and, and how to use it because like i said i'll have to i'll probably go through on a video maybe the the last video i'll do just a pure press this key to do this press this key to do that move around here you know just to uh, do like a short 10 minute video or something that shows how to get around and use the editor because obviously when you make these things you know what you had in mind you know what you programmed in but it doesn't always translate very easily even if you put a little command thing sometimes you need a little bit of explanation about what things are supposed to do or how they work and why, why you would want to use them um, or what you know manner you'd use them in um, and how to how to get around uh, sometimes it's easier to see it than to you know just have a command chart so we'll try to do that. So I probably am expecting this to be two or three videos long for this series, probably. That's all for now, and thank you, and thank you for watching all the other uh, the, the previous tile videos. Those are actually getting a lot of views. I wasn't expecting that, and I'm very grateful. So I should just say thank you for that. Um, you know that sort of thing will encourage me to do more with whatever I do. But um, I am thankful for that, and uh, didn't expect that, especially in such a short time. So cool, cool, and thank you all for that.